let us discuss dipole moment dipole moment symbol is uh, mu let us take uh, what is meant by dipole moment that we will see we will consider any one of the molecule suppose we are considering a hydrogen molecule we are considering hydrogen molecule if you see it is a nucleus of one hydrogen atom it is having oneness electron cloud hydrogen atom is having oneness electron cloud another hydrogen atom will take that nucleus that oneness electron cloud will take both oneness electron cloud overlap with each other therefore a bond is formed in this bond two electrons present okay now this nucleus of hydrogen is pulling bonding electron cloud towards itself this nucleus of hydrogen is pulling its bond electron cloud towards itself due to pulling by both this electron cloud this electron cloud will be migrating towards its side towards this hydrogen or towards this hydrogen towards which hydrogen it will migrate that means uh, this hydrogen nucleus is pulling this bonding electron cloud with itself with its what tendency to the same tendency this hydrogen also does therefore this bonding electron cloud is equally shared by both the bonding electron cloud is equally shared by both therefore uh, the bonding electron cloud is equally shared by both means uh, this bonding electron cloud is not having any movement towards any one side this bonding electron cloud is not having any movement towards any one side therefore no dipole moment for this sir so homogeneous diatomic molecules homogeneous diatomic molecules in the sense uh, dipole moment is not there because no moment why no moment because this bonding electron cloud is equally shared by both then this bonding electron cloud is not having any movement towards any one side therefore no dipole moment for this therefore homogeneous diatomic molecules do not have dipole moment sir <clears throat> now we will take hf we are taking hf this hydrogen nucleus will take hydrogen oneness electron cloud will take hydrogen oneness electron cloud this fluorine nucleus will consider fluorine nucleus will consider fluorine 2p orbital containing unpaired electron that we will consider fluorine 2p orbital containing unpaired electron that we are considering so overlapping therefore bonding electron cloud like this it is hydrogen nucleus it is fluorine nucleus now this fluorine nucleus this fluorine nucleus is having certain tendency to pull the bonding electron cloud towards itself that tendency is called electronegativity electronegativity of fluorine is 4 hydrogen nucleus has some tendency to pull the bonding electron cloud towards itself with some tendency that tendency is called electronegativity of hydrogen that is 2.1 so we have seen electronegativity of both so both pulling the bonding electron cloud with the what tendency that is said by electronegativity electronegativity of fluorine is higher than that of hydrogen that means fluorine nucleus pulling this bonding electron cloud towards itself greater than that of hydrogen nucleus therefore this bonding electron cloud is shared to higher extent by fluorine less extent by hydrogen this bonding electron cloud okay in this hf in hf in hf bonding electron cloud bonding electron cloud is highly shared by highly shared by fluorine but low extent shared by low extent shared by hydrogen okay so in hf this bonding electron cloud is highly shared by fluorine and to low extent shared by hydrogen so you say that uh, this bonding electron cloud is concentrated highly towards which side you think it bonding electron cloud this bonding electron cloud is concentrated highly towards which side towards fluorine or towards hydrogen that we have to say therefore we can say that bonding electron cloud 
bonding electron cloud is uh, is concentrated is concentrated more extent more extent uh, near fluorine near fluorine and uh, less extent less extent near hydrogen therefore <coughs> now you say this bonding electron cloud is equally shared by hydrogen as well as fluorine or not equally shared what do you say therefore uh, we can say bonding electron cloud bonding electron cloud is unequally shared is unequally shared unequally shared means what one has got higher share another has got lesser share that is the meaning no so one has got higher share means for that gain only no so for which gain of electron cloud for which loss of electron cloud that you say therefore therefore bonding electron cloud bonding electron cloud is gained by gained by fluorine and lost by hydrogen lost by hydrogen so hydrogen loses its bonding electron cloud whereas fluorine gains its bonding electron cloud so for fluorine gain for hydrogen loss therefore we can say for fluorine gain therefore fluorine is gaining bonding electron cloud so that we will give partial negative charge to fluorine hydrogen loses its bonding electron cloud for its loss loss of electron cloud in the sense uh, we have to give partial positive charge so for hydrogen we are giving partial positive charge for fluorine we are giving partial negative charge it is called positive pole it is called negative pole so two poles are there therefore it is called dipole this is called dipole so it is an example for dipolar species now this positive charge partial positive charge negative partial charge is there for this bond this bond is having partial positive charge at one end partial negative charge at one end therefore this bond is called a polar bond we have to call this is as a polar bond so this bond is called a polar covalent bond also we can say polar covalent bond polar covalent bond so if dipole is there then if polarity is there if the bond is polar then that bond is having what nature what is there means uh, dipole moment is there dipole moment is there if bond is polar then that bond is having dipole moment okay this bond is having polarity therefore it is having dipole moment we can say what is the definition of dipole moment dipole moment is defined as product of charge charge means either you take magnitude of positive charge otherwise you take magnitude of negative charge why we can take both because both magnitudes are equal this magnitude is equal to this magnitude therefore you take any one of the magnitude only sign is different it is positive sign it is negative sign but we want magnitude only no therefore uh, here magnitude of charge either this charge you substitute otherwise this magnitude you substitute anyone into l l is called what what is l l in the sense uh, that l is called this one here center point of nucleus of hydrogen center point of nucleus of fluorine that distance is called uh, l so l is called uh, distance between center of nucleus of hydrogen to center of nucleus of fluorine that is called l that is called uh, that l we have to substitute here so dipole moment uh, formula you remember it dipole moment formula is what delta into l what is delta charge which charge magnitude of positive charge otherwise magnitude of negative charge any one we can substitute why because both magnitudes are equal only sign is different therefore we can substitute any one of the charge we can substitute sign you need not substitute magnitude alone substitute then l is called what what is l distance between center of this nucleus to center of this nucleus that means bond length that is nothing but what bond length so you are substituting bond length here 
you are substituting bond length here this product is called dipole moment of a bond for this bond dipole moment is this dipole moment of a bond is called a bond moment bond moment we can say dipole moment of a bond is called what in the sense bond moment we can say otherwise bond dipole bond dipole we can say bond dipole so what is bond moment what is bond dipole bond dipole means dipole moment of a bond dipole moment of a bond is called a bond moment or bond dipole we can say sir now we will take example now we will go for a hf we have we know about hf for hf what is the dipole moment in the sense 1.78 capital d capital d is the unit of dipole moment sir what is the unit of dipole moment that we will see now this unit we will see in si system we will see it's it, it is called charge what is the unit of charge in si unit coulomb this is what bond length what is the si unit of bond length meter therefore dipole moment unit is coulomb meter in si system next one is a cgs system it is charge what is the unit of charge in cgs system esu esu is called electrostatic unit then bond length cgs unit is centimeter so dipole moment cgs unit is what esu centimeter <clears throat> another unit is there that is called debye that is called debye what is debye debye is called 10 to the power of minus 18 esu centimeter debye is called 10 to the power of minus 18 esu centimeter one debye is equal to sound circulation now for this hf what is the dipole moment means 1.78 d debye 1.78 debye now we will take hcl for hcl what is the dipole moment that we will see now hcl dipole moment will be what when compared to hf that point we will see sir for which we will take electronegativity we will take electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.1 electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.1 year electronegativity of cl is 3 here fluorine is 4 therefore uh, here fluorine is having higher tendency to pull the bond pair towards itself than this hydrogen here cl is having higher tendency to pull the bond pair towards itself than this hydrogen therefore hydrogen will have partial positive chlorine will have partial negative similarly here hydrogen partial positive f partial negative now we will see the magnitude of partial negative charge here magnitude of partial negative charge here we will compare this electronegativity is greater than that of this therefore here magnitude of partial negative charge is high here magnitude of partial negative charge is low okay what is the magnitude of negative charge here that much magnitude of positive charge will be here therefore here magnitude of positive charge is greater than this magnitude of partial positive charge then why do we give electronegativity is 2.1 for both this electronegativity of hydrogen in the sense understand that electronegativity of hydrogen in different compounds will be different then why do we say here electronegativity 2.1 here electronegativity 2.1 if you ask you are saying that we have taken from table then how pauling calculated electronegativity pauling calculated electronegativity based on bond energies for which when he considered he as he considered he arbitrarily assumed hydrogen electronegativity as 2.1 and he proceeded and he has taken another element also fluorine electronegativity 4 he considered arbitrarily and he he, con he continued okay so this electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.1 in the sense this is not same in all the cases okay it is a superficially given that's all sir so electronegativity of hydrogen in hf electronegativity of hydrogen in hcl certainly different so we cannot give electronegativity of hydrogen for millions of compounds millions of compounds are there hydrogen is bonding with carbon with oxygen with nitrogen with many elements hydrogen is forming bonds is it possible to give electronegativity of hydrogen for uh, each and every case so that only we have uh, considered like this sorry 
so here magnitude of positive charge here magnitude of positive charge is different here high here low sir now we will calculate dipole moment for dipole moment in the sense uh, this for, for charge substitute charge for uh, this hf this charge you substitute here you will get this dipole moment this charge you substitute here you will get this dipole moment okay we are substituting charge how the charge is there for both we will see okay here magnitude of charge is high here magnitude of charge is low sir next to bond length we will see f is small size cl is higher size therefore hf is having lower bond length hcl is having higher bond length sir now see charge if you see one is high another one is low bond length if you see it is low it is higher so how the dipole moment will be there so predicting predicting dipole moment is difficult now predicting dipole moment of hf and hcl Di comparing hcl and hf dipole moment we are finding difficulty if we consider charge only we can say dipole moment of hf is high if we consider bond length we can say hcl is having higher dipole moment so what experiment says that we will see experiment says uh, hcl dipole moment is uh, 1.07 by 1.07 by that means uh, hf bond hf dipole moment is higher than that of hcl that means the dominating factor is uh, this charge charge is dominating factor means electronegativity is the dominating factor but not bond length sir <clears throat> so using electronegativity we can explain dipole moment here electronegativity of f is greater than that of cl so this is having higher dipole moment than this like this we are explaining okay that means for the experimental fact what is the suitable reasoning that we have given actually we have not predicted okay we are unable to predict also therefore uh, we should know experimental fact then only we can give uh, the what suitable explanation okay sir here now we know hf and hcl therefore now we can predict hbr hbr will be less than that of hcl that we know because we know these two know that's why sir hbr dipole moment is a uh, 0.79 by hi dipole moment is a uh, hi dipole moment is a uh, 0.38 double okay therefore uh, like this is there uh, dipole moment like this is there uh, okay now we will see the polarity here how the polarity will be there polarity of bond here how the polarity of bond will be there that we'll see if dipole moment is high polarity will be high polarity of the bond will be high polarity of the bond will be less that means what here magnitude of charge is high here magnitude of charge is low that's why here polarity is high here polarity is low sir so we said about uh, heterogeneous diatomic molecules heterogeneous diatomic molecules means they are having polar covalent bonds they are having they are existing as a dipole they are having dipole moment their bond is having polarity sir <clears throat> what about this homogeneous diatomic molecule this is homogeneous diatomic molecule this homogeneous diatomic molecule means this is called a non polar covalent bond it is having what bond in the sense a non polar covalent bond it has non polar it is not having polarity we cannot give here partial positive charge here partial negative charge based on dipole moment so that uh, this electron cloud is equally shared by both this bonding electron cloud is equally shared by this hydrogen as well as this hydrogen therefore uh, this bond is called a non polar covalent bond okay sir so homogeneous diatomic molecules means non polar covalent bond it has heterogeneous diatomic molecule means that has a polar covalent bond okay next next we will see triatomic molecule we will see now we will take a beryllium chloride beryllium chloride the central atom is beryllium surrounding atoms are chlorine beryllium comes under group number 2a so this valence shell is having two electrons this electron is making bond with chlorine this electron is making bond with chlorine okay now electronegativity we will see electronegativity of cl is 3 electronegativity of beryllium we want to know it sorry second period elements we will take second period elements means lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine Electronegativity if we see lithium one, beryllium one point five, boron two, carbon two point five, nitrogen three, oxygen three point five, fluorine four. So increases by point five. Okay, so we can remember easily. So beryllium electronegativity how much means one point five, sir. 
Now you know that uh, how the electronegativity is there. You see, beryllium is having lower value, Cl is having higher value. Therefore, this bonding electron cloud is highly shared by which one? Cl. So Cl will get what charge? Partial negative charge. So Cl gets partial negative charge. Beryllium gets partial positive charge. Therefore, this bond is called what? Polar covalent bond. We can call this bond is a polar covalent bond because partial charges are there. Therefore, uh, this bond is having dipole moment. This bond is having dipole moment. That uh, dipole moment symbol is mu. Okay. Then we will see about this bond. We will see. Okay. In this bond also same like this. In that what is the uh, difference? Because this nature and this nature is the same. Nature of this bond and nature of this bond is same. Therefore, for this bond dipole moment, for this bond dipole moment will be same. Isn't it? Okay. So, so this bond is having dipole moment. Therefore, this bond is called polar covalent bond. This bond is having dipole moment. Therefore, this small this bond is called polar covalent bond. Okay. Now, what is the dipole moment of a molecule that we will see? Now we will see dipole moment of a molecule. Sir, so how to find dipole moment of a molecule? That we will see. So beryllium chloride we will take like this. For this dipole moment is how much in the sense mu. For this dipole moment is mu. Here, what is the magnitude of dipole moment? Same magnitude is for this bond also. This bond dipole moment, this bond dipole moment will be same. Sir, what is the resultant dipole moment that we will see? Now, this dipole moment is a vector quantity. So, how to give symbolic representation for a, this vector quantity dipole moment? Okay, for this symbolic representation is like this. Dipole moment is a vector. This vector quantity we are giving as a like symbolic representation like this. This end is given positive symbol. Why? Because it is having positive sign. See that beryllium is having positive sign. Its electronegativity is low. So it is having positive charge. Okay. This arrow mark is moving towards Cl. Why? Because this bonding electron cloud is highly shared by Cl. This bonding electron cloud is migrated towards Cl. This Cl has got a higher sharing of this bonding electron cloud. That's what this arrow mark indicates. Sir. So dipole moment direction for this bond is like this. For this bond, dipole moment direction is like this. What is a net dipole moment? Vector sum is called net dipole moment. So net dipole moment is how much? Here angle is 180 degree. It is linear. It is in this direction. It is in the opposite direction. What is the net dipole moment? Net dipole moment will be zero because it is cancelled by this. Isn't it? Sir, okay. Now we will see resultant dipole moment. We will we will see how to calculate that. We will see. Resultant dipole moment is equal to dipole moment of this bond plus dipole moment of this bond plus 2 into dipole moment of these two 2 into dipole moment of this bond into dipole moment of this bond into cos theta. Theta is 180 degree. Okay. Theta is 180 degree. We have substituted. So what we will get? We will see. It is 2 mu square plus cos, t, cos 180 we are substituting. It is also mu square. Therefore, minus 2. Okay. Therefore, what we will get? You see here, here mu square we have to write. So what is the value we are getting? 0. So resultant dipole moment is 0. So for this molecule, that means a beryllium chloride molecule, beryllium chloride molecule has zero dipole moment. Therefore, beryllium chloride is a non-polar molecule. <coughs> beryllium chloride is non-polar molecule. Beryllium chloride has zero dipole moment. Therefore, dipole, therefore beryllium chloride molecule is a non-polar, non-polar molecule. Non-polar molecule means uh, we cannot give one end partial negative charge, one end partial positive charge, we cannot give. We can't give partial negative or partial positive, we cannot give. Okay, therefore we can say beryllium chloride non-polar molecule. Now we will go for next molecule, boron trifluoride will take. So boron trifluoride, boron is the central atom. This boron group number is third A. Therefore, this valency shell is having three electrons. These three electrons making bond with the fluorine atoms, those, those we have given. We know that BF3 is called a trigonal, trigonal planar. 
BF3 is called a trigonal planar we know and bond angle is how much in the sense 120 degree is known. Okay. Now we will see regarding this bond dipole moment we will see. Okay. What is the dipole moment of this bond? Okay. We know boron, boron electronegativity, boron electronegativity is how much? 2. Fluorine electronegativity is 4. Okay. So this electronegativity is greater than that of this. Therefore, this bond is polar bond. This electronegativity is greater than this. Therefore, this bond is polar bond and dipole moment is like this. For this uh, dipole moment is like this. For this uh, dipole moment is like this. Okay. So dipole moment is given. For this uh, dipole moment magnitude is mu means for this also dipole moment magnitude is same mu. Magnitude of dipole moment for all the three bonds is same. Why all the three bonds are having same dipole moment? Because all the bonds have same nature. That's why all the bonds are having same dipole moment. Sir, now what is the dipole moment of the molecule? Sir, before that, uh, this bond is having dipole moment. Therefore, this bond is called polar bond, we can say. Now, what is the dipole moment of this molecule that we want to know it? Sir, how to find the dipole moment of this molecule? That we'll see. Now, we will take uh, BF3, we'll take. For this, uh, now we have to find the resultant dipole moment we have to find. Dipole moment of this molecule we have to find. Sir, first what shall we do in the sense, uh, first we will see dipole moment, resultant dipole moment of these two bonds we will see. Okay. Now for this dipole moment is this much, for this dipole moment is this much, here angle is how much in the sense uh, 120 degree, here angle is 120 degree. Okay. Sir, so we got, uh, the, for this resultant dipole moment we have to see. So for this resultant dipole moment. So, resultant dipole moment is equal to dipole moment of this bond square, then dipole moment of this bond square plus 2 into dipole moment of one bond into dipole moment of another bond into cos theta. Theta is how much in the sense 120 degree. So, we got like this. Okay. So, we are simplifying this. We are getting how much in the sense resultant dipole moment is this much. Okay. So, we got resultant dipole moment. That resultant dipole moment we will write. Now we have written BF3 like this. Okay. For these two, for these two bonds, what is the resultant dipole moment that we will write? The resultant dipole moment is like this. It is the resultant dipole moment. Okay. Resultant dipole moment direction is like this. Now for this dipole moment is like this. This magnitude is this much. This magnitude and this magnitude is same. Here angle is 180 degree. Therefore, resultant dipole moment for these two is how much means zero. Therefore, this molecule is having how much dipole moment means zero. This molecule is having zero dipole moment. Therefore, this molecule is non-polar molecule. Okay. This molecule is non-polar molecule. Okay. So, which molecules will be non-polar? If the molecule is symmetric, if the molecule is symmetric, then dipole moment will be zero. Then that molecule will be non-polar. Symmetric means dipole moment will be zero. It is symmetric molecule. How do we say it is symmetric molecule? Because surrounding atom is same. All the bonds are having same nature. All the bonds are having same bond length. All the bonds are having same bond energy. In bond angle is same everywhere. Bond angle is same everywhere. Here bond angle, here bond angle, here bond angle is same. Therefore, this molecule is symmetric. Symmetric means dipole moment is zero. Dipole moment zero means non-polar molecule. So this molecule is having polar bond, but molecule is non-polar. Okay. This non-polar molecule is having polar bond, we can say. Okay. So this is about uh, this uh, BF3. Okay. Next we will take CH4. CH4 uh, structure we will see. Central atom is carbon. Its valence shell is having four electrons. That four electrons we will write. Now, surrounding atoms are hydrogen atoms. The hydrogen atoms making bond with methane like this. Here, this bond is rear side. So, we will write this bond is projecting towards us. So, we will write here. Here, what is the shape of this molecule means? It is a tetrahedral. It is tetrahedral. Why it is called a tetrahedral? If you join any three hydrogen atoms, you will get equilateral triangle. If you join any three hydrogen atoms here, you will get the equilateral triangle. How many equilateral triangles you will get in the sense? Four equilateral triangles you will get. Therefore, tetra. Hedron means equivalent phase. Therefore, it is tetrahedral. 
and here what is the bond angle in the sense 109 degree 28 minutes then bond angle is 109 degree 28 minutes means between any two neighboring bonds angle will be 109 degree 28 minutes between these two 109 degree 28 minutes between these two 109 degree 28 minutes between any two neighboring bonds here bond angle is same surrounding atom same all the bonds have same nature all the bonds have same bond length same bond energy therefore this molecule is symmetric symmetric in the sense uh, what is the dipole moment zero therefore this molecule is non polar so we can say methane is a non polar molecule methane is non polar molecule its a dipole moment is what in the sense uh, zero sir so, what about bond this bond is having dipole moment or not that we will see this carbon is having electronegativity 2.5. This hydrogen is having electronegativity 2.1. Electronegativity difference is lower value. Low value. Electronegativity difference is low. Any of polarity is there, no doubt. This bond is having polarity. But how the polarity will be there means uh, the polarity will be lower value because electronegativity difference is less. Even Pauling also said like this only. Electronegativity difference. Electronegativity difference is directly proportional to delta polarity of the bond. Okay, electronegativity difference is directly proportional to square root of polarity of the bond. Delta means polarity of the bond. So here these two atoms are having different electronegativities, but difference is less. Therefore, this bond is having lower polarity. Sir, okay. So about methane, we said. Now we will take PCl5 molecule. In the PCL5 molecule, central atom is phosphorus. This valency shell is having 5 electrons. Why? Because it is coming under 5th year group. It is coming under 5th year group. Therefore, this valency shell is having 5 electrons. These electrons making bond with the, which one in the sense? Chlorine atoms. These electrons making bond with the chlorine atoms. Now, if you join uh, these 3 chlorine atoms, you will get a triangle. What triangle in the sense? Equilateral triangle you will get. Therefore, what is the angle here in the sense 120 degree? It is called eco equatorial chlorine, whereas it is called axial chlorine. Between axial chlorine and equatorial chlorine, angle is 90 degree. Therefore, this molecule is having two different bond angles. Between equatorial chlorines, bond angle is high. Between axial chlorine and equatorial chlorine, bond angle is low. And also we know this axial bond length is higher than that of equatorial bond length. We know that axial bond length is higher than that of equatorial bond length. Then how do we say this molecule is symmetric? This molecule is not symmetric. Therefore, this molecule is having dipole moment. Therefore, uh, this molecule is polar molecule. This molecule is having dipole moment. Therefore, this molecule is a polar molecule. It is not symmetric. Okay. Uh, what about bond? Bond is a uh, bond is polar bond or non-polar bond means uh, Cl electronegativity 3. Chlorine uh, phosphorus electronegativity is 2.1. Therefore, these two atoms are having different electronegativities. Therefore, this bond is polar bond. Mm, bond is polar, molecule also polar. Sorry, okay. Now we will take a, another molecule that is SF6. We will take. We are taking SF6. In SF6, central atom is what means sulfur. Sulfur comes under group number 6A. 6A in the sense uh, this valency shell is having six electrons. So each electron is making bond with the fluorine atom. Each electron is making bond with the fluorine atom like this. Sorry. What is the shape of SF6? SF6 shape is octahedron. Octahedron. Bond angle is how much in the sense 90 degree? Sir, this is a shape what we said in the sense octahedron we said. Sir, okay. Now, if you join these three, if you join a if you join these four fluorine atoms, what shape you will get in the sense? Square planar we will get. This fluorine will be up and this fluorine will be down. Now, we will join uh, three fluorine atoms. Above one fluorine, in this square fluorine, in this uh, square planar, two fluorines. Take in the square planar two fluorines and above fluorine you take and join. You will get equilateral triangle. Similarly, you take down fluorine and square planar fluorine, you take square planar two fluorines, down fluorine, you join, you will get equilateral triangle. 
how many equilateral triangles totally you will get in the sense 8 therefore octa etran octa etran we can say so <coughs> shape of this molecule is what means octa etran so since it is having a symmetric nature bond angle is same everywhere bond angle is same but how to see the bond angle don't see the bond angle between this fluorine and this fluorine that is not neighbors for this fluorine neighbor is not this fluorine for this fluorine what is a neighbor means these four fluorine atoms are neighbors okay therefore uh, for this fluorine this fluorine and this fluorine angle if you see 90 degree for this fluorine neighbor is uh, these four fluorine atoms square planar fluorine atoms but not this then uh, you may ask a question that uh, this fluorine we should not relate with this fluorine you are saying no then how do we say that it is 90 degree you are comparing this fluorine with the square planar not with this this fluorine in the sense uh, we will get to 180 degree that's why you are not saying that question you may you may have in your mind sir for this we will see this s of 6 in another manner we will see now we will see this s of 6 in another manner now see now i will draw square planar c now i am going i am drawing a square planar okay so we got square planar now now say all the fluorine atoms are equivalent or not so that the neighboring fluorine atoms means say this fluorine and this fluorine is it neighbors no what is bond angle angle between neighboring bonds is called bond angle now therefore uh, what is the bond angle in s of 6 in the sense uh, we have to consider this 180 degree or we should not say 180 degree uh, what do you say shall we say this 180 degree is called bond angle no because these two are not neighboring bonds which are neighboring ones these two are called neighboring bonds so that angle only we have to say as bond angle so bond angle is 90 degree for s of 6 okay so s of 6 is a symmetric molecule why symmetric molecule means only one bond angle that itself says it is symmetric molecule symmetric molecule in the sense a dipole moment is zero therefore uh, this is non-polar molecule sf6 is non-polar molecule but bond is having polarity this bond is polar bond okay molecule is a non-polar molecule but bond is having polar bond so this non-polar molecule is having dipole moment but uh, dipole moment zero but this non-polar molecule is having polar bonds Set. So, S of 6 is a so and so we said. Okay. Next molecule will take SNCl2. This tin is the central atom. This, this is coming under group number 4A. Therefore, this valence shell is having 4 electrons. This valence shell is having 4 electrons. It is making bond with the Cl. It is making bond with Cl. This shape is bent shape or angular shape. It is bent shape, you can say. Okay. So, this bond is having dipole moment, no doubt, because these two atoms are different. Therefore, this bond is polar bond. This bond also polar bond. There is no doubt. What about lone pair? This lone pair creates a dipole moment or does not create dipole moment. This bond is creating dipole moment because these two atoms are having different, different, these two atoms are different. Therefore, electronegativity is different. Therefore, this bond is having dipole moment. What about lone pair? Is it having dipole moment? Is it uh, having dipole moment or not? This is lone pair. This lone pair, is it having dipole moment? How do we say? Whether it is having dipole moment or not, how do we say? For which? This lone pair is attracted by one nucleus. Sir, this lone pair is uh, attracted by attracted by thin nucleus. Tin nucleus. This lone pair is under the attraction by tin nucleus. Sir, this lone pair is uh, repelled by this lone.